one of the most significant events to take place over the last 20 years must surely be the, the rise of social media. It seems now that people can uh, exchange views, have conversations, express themselves in many different ways uh, and cover every nation of the world. And out of this phenomenon of social media has come a new profession, that of the social media uh, influencer. And what I believe a social media influencer does is that being sponsored by various kinds of uh, businesses such as clothes, makeup, even motor cars, uh, they write up positive reviews that their followers can read. And of course, the one qualification for being a social media influencer is that you have thousands of people who follow you on social media. I looked at it myself and I checked my own followers on social media and they totaled 15. So I suppose my uh, ambitions of becoming uh, a social media influencer have been dashed even before they begin. But it's not just on social media that our lives have an influence. We have an influence in every aspect of our day-to-day -day lives, from the jobs that we do, from our families, our communities, our neighbours, what we say and what we do, and how we respond to other people so often influences them, perhaps in ways that we have never imagined. But for the believer in Jesus, the influence that we want to exert upon our friends and families on the world itself is the influence of our master, of the Messiah, God's own son, Jesus. The Apostle Paul talks about this kind of influence and how we can go about um, producing the correct uh, influence as far as Jesus is concerned. And he does so in Philippians and in chapter 2, where he recites what possibly has been a hymn uh, in the early church. Beginning at verse 5 of chapter 2, then he says, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So what Paul is expressing here is that, and indeed throughout the Christian scriptures, is that believers are encouraged to be imitators of God, to be like Jesus. We're told to walk like Jesus, that's in 1 John 2, 6. We're told to forgive one another, such as Colossians 3, 13. To be kind to one another, in Ephesians 4, 32. And to love as Jesus did, there in the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verse 34. But here in Philippians chapter 2, this hymn encourages us to have the same mind as Christ. It can also be translated as thinking the same way as Christ. To let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus that can be understood as a directive for us to think as Jesus thought. But in our contemporary context, we think of the mind as the, the seat of our intellect so often. 
It determines how we feel and how we think. It processes what we know and ultimately it determines how we behave. However, in the ancient philosophical world, some schools of thought held that the mind was part of the soul. Others suggested that the mind held eternal truths. As such, to have the same mind as Jesus means more than merely thinking good and happy thoughts. It implies taking on the nature or the character of Jesus. In this hymn in particular, and throughout Philippians, two aspects of Jesus' character are emphasised. His humility and his obedience. If we are to have the mind of Christ, we must be humble, we must be obedient. Now these are what we might call relational terms. Humility is one's posture in relation to another. Obedience is a form of deference to act or respond out of respect for another. They are neither weak nor are they passive conditions. But the Philippian hymn also makes clear a relationship between humility and exaltation. In verse 9, Therefore God exalted him, Jesus, and gave him a name that is above every name. If I'm understanding that part of the hymn correctly, then God exalts in response to our obedience. And Jesus did not exploit his equality with God. He did not wield his power in ways he could have. He didn't seek fame and he certainly didn't seek fortune. Though acknowledging our ability and work is essential, our success will ultimately come from the recognition we will receive from the one who has called us and equipped us. To be like Jesus, we cannot exploit our relationship with God. We must not, but respond to it by demonstrating our willingness to serve. Throughout the hymn, we also find the word form, which can also mean shape or, or likeness. The various forms that Jesus takes suggest that we must also be flexible in order to be like Jesus and to um, have the same influence as he had. We must be able to adjust. We must be ready to change. We have to be ready to adapt to meet the current need. Jesus is found in the form of God, in the form of a slave, and finally in the form of a human. And Jesus was not stagnant. He was a shape shifter. He was obedient to God's will by becoming what God needed him to be. An example of this shape shifting is exemplified by Jesus emptying himself. So verse 7. Perhaps the image of a pitcher of water being poured into a glass helps us to understand the point here. Though we often focus on the pitcher, we understand the act of emptying as a loss. But should we not be focusing on the glass or on the act of filling up? Water shifts and takes the shape of its object, ultimately changing it. When Jesus pours himself into the form of an enslaved person, he dignifies, indeed 
he defies and deifies this likeness. Jesus lowered himself in order to uplift. Jesus emptied himself into humanity in order to change it. In the ultimate act of empathy, Jesus becomes who and what we are. So we, in turn, can become who and what he is. Quite often when I travel to London uh, and I use the underground to get around London City, I'm reminded every time I step off the underground train, please mind the gap. It's a cautionary statement, isn't it? To be careful of the distance between the space, between the train and the platform. You know, in many ways, I think that warning, mind the gap, is implicit in this text. Even while Paul warns explicitly of evil workers in this, lesson, in this letter, growing to be more like Jesus can be filled with pitfalls. It can indeed. When we do not have the mind of Jesus, we are likely to behave in ways that do not glorify God. When we do not have the mind of Jesus, there is discord, confusion, and indeed, on many occasions, destruction. How then do we keep our minds stayed on Jesus? Well, Christians have a tool, and that tool is the Bible. And this can prove helpful to becoming more Christ-like. We must refresh ourselves by studying the life, the words, the actions of Jesus. And becoming more like him is a matter of practice. And we must practice things like kindness, practice love, forgiveness, practicing humility, practicing obedience until we have perfected them. To avoid the gaps, we must be focused and intentional. We have to demonstrate our willingness to be shape shifters. We must exercise our empathy, not just in words, but by becoming what God needs for us to be. The seemingly impossible moments of life present us with opportunities to practice being humble and being obedient, to extend forgiveness and to have a willingness to change so that we can become more like Christ. Let us mind the gaps and not fall for things that would separate, separate us from God and indeed from each other. As we journey with Jesus to the cross, let us walk mindfully, being concerned about what concerns him. In particularly challenging moments, let's be reminded that the God who meets us at the cross is the God who will give us resurrecting power. The psalmist points this out for us. What is humanity that God is mindful of us? But perhaps the question that we should carry with us is how we can be mindful of God. To follow Jesus, mind the gaps, and bear an influence in this world that reflects all that he is.